Welcome, this is Mr. Hyatt, and this is the uh, APES Chapter 17 lecture on solid and hazardous waste. Uh, we start out with a case study looking at e-waste. Make sure you, you read the, uh, the text. Um, but we know a lot about e-waste. It's uh, basically anything electronic that gets thrown away. There are lots of heavy metals in uh, electronic devices, and we have tons of those. So uh, we all have broken the cell phone and thrown it away and things like that. So we need to make sure that we uh, th that we are res recycling those responsibly. A couple of questions that you need to make sure you can answer before test day is what is why is the U.S. allowed to export e-waste, and then how does the European Union deal with e-waste? And, and we'll address some of those uh, later uh, in this lecture as well. Uh, so think about what happens to the waste you generate each day. Where does it go? Where does it end up? Does it end up in a landfill? Does it end up in an incinerator? Or does it end up being recycled in a closed loop or an open loop format? Do you have single stream recycling or do you have to separate your recycling? Um, so what are some of the issues that relate to solid and especially hazardous waste, which we'll, we'll really focus on uh, specifically later. Um, but essentially we can't be sustainable if we live in a throwaway society. Those two things are mutually exclusive. You, you can't have both. So if we want to be more sustainable, then we have to reduce our waste. We have to be better about how we handle our waste. You see here, uh, if we see our trash, like the old expression that uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure, uh, if we see our trash as a useful material, then we can move towards sustainability. Maybe we're talking about selling things on... Craigslist, selling things on Facebook markets, something like that. Maybe we're talking about donating it to Goodwill. Maybe we're talking about upcycling it and recycling it and all those things that Pinterest has made possible um, here in, in 2018. So how can we get, or how much can we get for a resource? Um, how much can, oh, this is a big one, industrial municipal solid waste. How much of that can be reused and how much of it can be recycled? We've talked a lot about how uh, upstream of the user is where most of the waste happens. That, that's, that was a terribly worded sentence, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Most of the waste happens before it gets to me. I can recycle everything that I, that I purchase, but if the people that are making those products aren't recycling and aren't reusing materials, then I'm not really making a, a significant dent in what's going on. And can products be designed to curb waste? Can we use recyclable things? Uh, can we use a hemp-based plastic that breaks down over time as opposed to using a petroleum-based plastic? Things along those lines. Uh, the biggest problem, I guess one of the many problems, uh, is that we're just accumulating more and more and more trash. It's not, it's not breaking down as quickly as we're using it. Well, that sure sounds like a sustainability issue. So solid waste is going to be anything that's solid that we don't want. Um, not a liquid or a gas, it's a solid. Industrial solid waste, that's going to be stuff like mines, farm waste, uh, industrial waste, things like that. Municipal solid waste is going to be basically all trash. Uh, combined waste produced by households and workplaces other than factories. So it's industrial solid waste and then municipal solid waste. 98% of all solid waste produced in the U.S. is industrial waste. From mining, 76% of our solid waste is from mining. 13% is from ag and uh, sorry 9.5% from industry. So we've spent a ton of time talking about mining and, and how bad it is. This is just yet another uh, way that we can be better if we improve our mining practices uh, and we shift to renewable resources then this number is a really good opportunity or I'm sorry this is a really good opportunity to reduce our overall solid waste. Uh, the remaining 1.5% is municipal solid waste. So that's kind of what I've been talking about. I recycle everything I buy. I'm, I'm not making a huge dent. Uh, we looked at the Pacific garbage patch. Uh, we've looked at microplastics like microbeads and things like that. I think you're probably in good shape there. Here's a picture from your book that shows the garbage patch for, forming. There's the eastern and the western patch that, that combine and send things basically back and forth from Asia to the U.S. Hazardous waste uh, is obviously a, a, an issue because uh, they're hazardous. It's not just trash that's accumulating, it's trash that's dangerous and, and trash that could hurt us. 
remember that toxic or tox uh, toxicity, uh, those are all words that revolve around how dangerous something is. So if something is a toxic hazardous waste, then it's going to be dangerous, it would be extremely dangerous to human health. Uh, radioactive waste, we've talked a little bit about that, it has to be stored for 10 to 240,000 years, a long time. Uh, and we don't have a great way to, to safely store them, so it's just kind of a hanging out there kind of a problem. So 17.2 is how should we deal with it? Um, like like we've talked over the last really year, the best way to deal with any of these issues, pollution, uh, solid waste buildup, water pollution, all, all the types of issues we've talked about is prevent it. It's always better to prevent the problem than to try to fix it once it happens. Um, so if we can reduce how much we're using, then we'll have a huge impact on uh, what we're doing uh, in landfills and things along those lines. Um, I, I've, I've talked a lot in class about packaging. If we can reduce our packaging so that we don't have 10 pieces of plastic for one item, then we've made a huge step in reducing our solid waste. Existing waste, reuse, recycle, or dispose of safely, and we'll talk about what those look, look like uh, here in just a few. Our wastes have to go somewhere. Uh, so waste management is going to be controlling wastes in ways that reduce environmental harm without trying to reduce the amount of waste produced. So again, we're not reducing, we're managing. Uh, we use the term integrated pest management uh, when we were talking about pesticides. Same kind of idea here. Integrated waste management is doing a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and not doing a lot of anything. Um, when we talk about managing our waste, outside of reduction, we are talking about burying, burning, or exporting waste. When we talk about reduction, uh, we could use less, we could reuse, we could recycle, or we could compost existing wastes. All of this is going to roll, be rolled into integrated waste management. We can't compost everything. We can't burn everything. So we should do a little bit of each thing to... Uh, reduce the overall impact of this solid waste. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, so we've definitely improved at our uh, landfill technology and we've improved at incineration, but they still have some pretty pretty st stark disadvantages and some, some big downsides. Uh, buried wastes are going to contribute to water pollution. We'll look at, at why that is here in a second. And burning, of course, is going to contribute to air and water pollution and it's going to uh, emit greenhouse gases and, and toxins and things like that. So when we look at burying solid waste, we've got two types of landfills, and you know this from the lab that we're doing right now. We've got sanitary landfills where we spread out solid wastes in, in layers. We put uh, clay or plastic lining the bottom of the pit, and we'll also uh, cover the, the trash, sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes uh, you know, the, the interval changes depending on the environmental conditions. If you get a lot of rain, uh, you need to cover it more frequently than if you don't get a lot of rain. Um, and so we'll cover with uh, clay to keep the materials dry, to reduce leakage, to reduce leachates and things like that, decrease odors and, and things along those lines. So that's a sanitary landfill. An open dump is just a, a big area where trash is, is dumped. We don't see that a lot. Uh, we saw several of those in Belize uh, when we traveled over spring break. So um, it's, they're rare in developed countries, uh, but China uses them. And, uh, you know, there are some examples. Uh, here's a picture of a sanitary landfill. I kind of talked through that idea. Uh, we've got these, these leachate pipes that ideally redirect the wastewater that, that leaches off of here. We've got methane recovery. Uh, above it, that 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 can be really uh, powerful in terms of preserving uh, the atmosphere. Uh, methane is has a huge warming potential. We we talked about that a while back, um, and a major source of methane outside of cows is uh, anaerobic respiration that happens in landfills. So often, when you drive past a landfill, you'll see pipes that stick up where they're burning off methane, uh, or even better, we can capture it and we can use it to generate electricity and reduce our impact uh, through fossil fuels as well. So kind of killing two birds with one stone. If we move on to incineration, um, it's, it's 
like I, like I said before, we've we've come a long way. We do we're a lot better at burning things today than we were uh, maybe 50 years ago. Um, today we have these waste to energy incinerators that are going to use their heat to boil water. I got a picture of that. Um, the ash can be stored elsewhere. It is going to have to be stored elsewhere. Typically, it goes into a landfill of some sort, um, but it can be expensive. I'm sorry. Um, you see here that scientists and some local government officials oppose this method because it, it gives people the uh, kind of a false sense of security. I don't need to recycle. I don't need to reuse because we're just going to burn it. It's going to shrink the, the, the physical size of the waste down, so it's not as big a deal. That, to me, is, is if that's what we're arguing about, then we're in pretty good shape. This is how a waste-to-energy incinerator works. You see the trash truck pulls up and dumps the waste into a pit. But then a crane is going to drop into a furnace. We're going to boil water, just like always. We're talking about turning a turbine to generate electricity. If we continue the, the matter, uh, the p matter pathway, I guess I should say, the furnace boils water. Then we're going to have ash that comes out of the fire that we're going to have to dispose of somewhere. Uh, we're going to have this wet scrubber that's going to clean the gases, um, kind of separate the water, separate the steam um, from the methane and the ethanes and the nitrates and the sulfates and the things like that. Uh, then we'll use an electrostatic precipitator to pull more of those organics and those carbon-based molecules out. Got to dispose of this, got to dispose of this. The dirty water most times can be um, sent to a wastewater treatment facility or it can be recycled. It can be cleaned and put back in for this purpose. So it's not necessarily going into drinking water, but it's going back into here. So they're reusing the same water many, many times. Uh, then this electrostatic uh, precipitator is going to, like I said, pull more of the organics out. The smokestack ideally is a clean... Uh, clean emission, um, but that's you know ideal is never is never the case. So uh, what it really comes down to is we need to to reduce our impact. Um, we need to reduce the amount of trash that we're we're making. Uh, your book rules an extra R in here, um, be, because they think and I like this. Refuse is don't use things that you don't have to. To me, that's a part of reduction, but I like that they kind of separate it out in, in this particular case. So refuse what you don't have to use, use less, reduce what you have to use, or use a little bit less of what you have to use, reduce the packaging, I keep coming back to that because it's it's in my head, reuse things over and over, reuse your water, bo water bottle 25, 35 times and you've reduced your impact. And then recycle. Uh, convert things into other things, convert things back to aluminum cans, things like that. Uh, I really like this image. I wouldn't be surprised to see this image come up on your uh, your unit test. It's a pretty good comparison of what we should do and what we actually do. Um, ideally, we are reducing what we're using. We're reusing a lot of what we do use. We recycle and compost everything that we can. Then we incinerate what is okay to incinerate, and we bury the ash that's left over after the incineration. But if you notice, we're not our our sequence is off. Um, reduction is at less than a percent. Reuse is at less than a percent. We incinerate about nine percent of our waste. We compost about twenty three percent, which is you know that that's that's good. Uh, almost a quarter of our waste is recycled or, or composted, but almost two thirds, uh, over two thirds gets buried in landfills. So that's definitely an opportunity for improvement. Um, you know, it, it's not quite inverted, but it's pretty close to inverted. Uh, that'll be the end of video one. I'll pick up um, with uh, reusing more materials in video two.